Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Clever Zadiambo and welcome back to the channel. Now, starting out in oil painting can be challenging, especially for a beginner, if you don't know what materials to buy and what to buy them for. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 11 items you need if you want to begin oil painting, and hopefully you'll find this helpful. So at number one, you're going to start with canvas, and canvas normally comes in three forms, but the most common for oil painting is going to be raw canvas. A raw canvas is a type of fabric that's tough, not as tough as, say, a tent, but it's the same material. If you're buying material for oil painting, try to buy something that doesn't stretch, because sometimes you'll end up rolling a painting and if you buy a material that stretch or a canvas that stretches then when you roll the painting the painting will crack so raw canvas is the most common form of canvas but you can't paint on raw canvas the way it comes you have to prepare the surface in other words you have to block the pores so that when you paint paint doesn't seep to the other side and so another form of canvas you can buy is primed canvas and this is basically canvas that has been painted on top so it will take away one step in your canvas preparation for painting so you won't have to prime it yourself now primed canvas is normally a bit too expensive and the priming process itself isn't that difficult a job so i would suggest if you can just buy raw canvas but if you can't find raw or primed canvas then the third form of canvas you can buy is canvas boards now canvas boards are basically sheets of primed canvas stuck on top of cardboard and so for a beginner it would be good to buy as many as 10 canvas boards if you can because this will give you a good enough number of surfaces to do your oil painting trials without having to worry about how to prepare your canvas and how to stretch it on a frame now if you buy a raw canvas instead then you'll need to have a carpenter make wooden frames for you which is what i use for all my paintings now the advantage of buying raw canvas and having a carpenter make frames for you is that you can come up with many custom sizes the canvas boards on the other hand come in selected sizes but if you want to do paintings that are really big then raw canvas is the way to go because it's lighter and you can also remove the painting from the frame and roll it when you're done whereas with the canvas board you obviously can't roll it because it's cardboard at number two you have the primer and this is basically the foundation that's going to cover your canvas and protect it from oil paint or acrylic paint seeping into it so what the primer is going to do is when you paint it on top of the raw canvas, it's going to block the pores in the fabric. So when you paint with your oil or your acrylic or even watercolor paint if you want, you won't have the trouble of paint soaking into the other side. Now the primer that I use is a type of paint called silk vinyl. And the good thing about silk vinyl is it also doubles up as white acrylic paint. Because despite being a type of emulsion paint, which is the paint that, that's normally used on walls, it mixes and dries the same way acrylic paints do. So if you need acrylic paints as well, and you use the silk vinyl type of primer, then you won't need to buy white acrylic paint because the paint used for your primer can do the job of white acrylic paint just as well as you would want acrylic paint to do. And that brings us to the third item on the list, which is going to be acrylic paints. Now this is optional depending on the method you use in oil painting. And if you use the process that I use, which is I don't like to paint on white surfaces and I like the backgrounds that are colored before I begin my oil painting, then acrylic is the way to go. Now, one advantage of using acrylic as your background layer is that acrylic dries really fast. So if you apply a coat of acrylic paints, normally within five minutes, the paint is normally dry. And with oil painting, I suppose you want to spend more time doing your oil painting than waiting for the acrylic paint to dry. So it's a perfect background for oil painting. And another advantage of using acrylic as a background as opposed to the primer is that acrylic dries in a more sort of glassy or kind of plastic feel at the top and because of this nature of how it dries oil paint slides really well on top of it at number four we have chalk but you can substitute this with charcoal or with pencil depending on the color of background you're going to be using now what i use chalk for or what you can use charcoal or pencil for is to draw your outlines before you begin your oil painting what i mean by the outlines is basically the lines that separate different parts of of the canvas so if you're painting say this scene uh, on your screen right now the outline will be the line that separates my head from the background or the t-shirt from the from the background or my or the t-shirt from my arm and so on and so forth and this is also the stage of the painting where you're going to be taking care of all your proportions so chalk is the way to go or charcoal or pencil because you can always rub it or paint over it or draw many more different lines over it until you get the proportions right but you can also use oil paints except if you use oil paints then charcoal Chances are your outlines are going to get messy because artists, myself included, make lots of mistakes when drawing our outlines for the first time in a painting. At number five, we have oil paints themselves. As um, despite what the name suggests, oil paints are not actually oily. What oil paints mean is they don't mix with water, but they're oil soluble instead. Now, if you're going to buy oil paints, you're going to find more than one brand. I personally use either Winston Newton and Reeves as my main brands, although I've used Fevicryl and Marie's before. But don't worry about this because most oil paints are intermixable, if that's a word. In other words, you can mix different brands and not worry about the quality 
of the paint or the paint cracking when you're done. Now the advisable way to go about buying paint if you're starting out is you should probably buy the 18 or 24 pack. This is normally between 15 and 20 dollars depending on the brand you buy and this is going to give you a variety of options and will possibly eliminate one step which is mixing lots of colors if you if you're starting out because 18 colors is quite a variety to paint with but as you'll find out with time and with practice mixing oil paints is a really easy process now over time you'll figure out what colors you use the most in your paintings so if say for instance like myself i paint lots of skin tones so i need more of the browns and more of the art colors than i need say the cool colors like blues and greens and so the next time you go to buy your oil paints, I would suggest buying the larger tubes as well, as opposed to just the small 18 or 24 pack. And having a lot of paint will also help you sort of mentally because you won't have this fear of paint running out while you're in the middle of a painting. So if you can't buy the larger tubes, you can start with the 18 or 24 pack for now. But over time, try to expand your collection of oil paints to include bigger tubes because this will really help you. The sixth item on the list is going to be medium. Now oil paints naturally are a bit too thick to apply sometimes and so if you need something to make your oil paint a bit more viscous or so it flows a bit better but doesn't dilute the paint then linseed oil or galkite oil are the mediums that I use the most. And that brings us to our seventh item the solvent or the paint thinner which is normally confused for the medium. Now here's the difference. While the medium makes the paint easier to apply but doesn't dilute it solvent actually dilutes the paint now to illustrate if you're painting say with watercolor or with acrylic and you want your colors to be less opaque then you're going to add lots of water now what water does to watercolor solvent or the paint thinner does for oil paints now the types of solvents you can use are kerosene or turpentine now these are the sort of toxic options and so if you're using kerosene or turpentine then you need to have good air circulation in your studio so if you don't have a fan in your studio, you can open your windows when you paint or if possible, you can paint outside where the air flows freely. Now there are solvents that are healthier options which you can inhale without a problem. And these are white and mineral spirits. One of them is called Gemsol and the other one is called Tapenoid. I've used Gemsol before, but I don't use it anymore. Mostly because another use of solvent actually is to clean your brushes. And if you're cleaning your brushes all the time, which I do almost every other day, then you need lots of solvent and Gemsol is too expensive to use that way. So you're going to risk having dirty brushes or having to spend a lot of money on something you can actually do without. At number eight, we're going to talk about the brushes. We can categorize brushes in terms of size, in terms of shape and in terms of texture. Now with size, you can have large, medium and small brushes. With shape, you can have say flat and round brushes and brushes of many other shapes. And with texture, you can have soft and hard brushes. Let's talk about size first. If possible, buy at least six brushes, two small, two medium and two large. And by small, I mean anything from number triple zero all the way to number three. And medium, something between say number four all the way to number eight. And for large brushes, anything above number 10 is good enough for oil painting. Now, there are other stages of the painting, like when you're beginning and you're covering the entire surface of your canvas, where you're going to need extra large brushes. And these mostly are also hard brushes. So if you can, you can buy some of those big brushes used to paint on walls, because those will help you when you're applying your primer and when you're applying your backgrounds, if you're painting with, say, acrylic. And you can even use them with oil paint sometimes if you're painting a large painting where sometimes you need a lot of coverage. So in terms of texture, if you're doing oil paint, you're going to need soft brushes for the most part. But just to be safe and because you never know what you're going to need at, at some other point in time, if you can, buy a, a few hard brushes as well. In terms of the shapes of the brushes, the main different types of shapes are either round brushes or flat brushes. And so when you're buying your first six brushes, if you're going to only buy six of them, if possible, buy one flat and one round for each size. Over time, try to add to your collection of brushes because it's always better to have more brushes than you need than to have less brushes when you need them. At number nine, we have the palette. Now the palette is any surface that you're going to use to mix your paint and to arrange your paint before you apply it on the canvas. And this is ideally going to be any surface that doesn't absorb the paint and that's light enough that you can carry around. I personally use the canvas board that we mentioned earlier. And what I do is I take the canvas board and I cut it into small enough sizes. And one of them will be this one, like this is what I'm using right now as my palette. And to use them as palettes, I stick masking tape on top. And when the palettes get messy or full of oil paints, then I simply remove the masking tape throw it out and replace it with new strips of masking tape and I'm good to go. Other options you can use as materials for your palettes is if you can find a sheet of glass or a plastic plate 
or a wooden pallet like the ones they sell at art stores that will work as well now the next item you're going to need which is number 10 on our list is going to be the pallet knife this is the item you're going to use to mix your paint on the pallet and the pallet knife is not really a knife it's more like a um, funny shaped um, sort of flat spoon but if you go to the art store don't ask for that ask for a pallet knife this is what pallet knives look like if you can't find pallet knives you can use an old brush or a bigger brush to mix your paint if you have one although this will need a lot of wiping and by the way something else about raw canvas is you can use it as a rag to wipe your brushes so if you need something to wipe your brushes but you don't have say a rag or another piece of cloth then raw canvas will do the job just as well now the last item on the list is going to be the easel the easel is the frame or the structure that's going to hold your canvas for you and what you need in this case is something not too fancy it doesn't have to be and for as little as 50 or 60 us dollars you can find a large and strong enough wooden or metal easel preferably buy the wooden one because it easier to customize if you want to make it stronger or if you want to extend some parts a carpenter can always do that for you another reason why i would vouch for the wooden easel more and this is also an extra tip for basically everything else in your studio is it's easy to add wheels at the bottom of it that's going to make your work a lot easier when you're moving things around if you can't find an easel you can always just place a table next to a wall then put your painting on the table and let the top lean against the wall and that's going to be a temporary easel so to speak before you buy something that can allow you to move the painting up and down as you want and also hopefully move around the studio easily so these 11 items you need and what to use them for if you want to begin oil painting i hope you enjoyed the video in which case you can like and subscribe and if you have any questions about oil painting you can leave them in the comment section below and i'll get back to you either way thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye